Let me bring in Senator John McCain. Welcome back, sir. Thank you, George. So Secretary Gates I, is sticking around for a while. I hope he's there for a long time. We have a lot to talk about this morning. Let's begin where he left off on Guantanamo. Mm -hmm. During the campaign, you had a very strong position that Guantanamo mm -hmm. should be closed, but you've also mm -hmm. been very critical of the way President Obama's handled it. Do you still believe that Guantanamo should be closed? Oh, yeah, but the f mistake was, and I respectfully disagree with Secretary Gates, was that they didn't have a policy as to how to address these very difficult and complex issues. They are more complex than about any that I've ever, the legal side of this, as well as trying to get cooperation from countries to take these people. So the policy should have been formulated and put into effect, and then the announcement. And uh, again, I just disagree with Secretary so, Gates. The policy should have been formulated and then implemented, and then you would have had a time frame that you wouldn't have to say, hey, we can't keep one of our first commitments. So you think it's good news that this deadline is slipping? Well, I don't. I think it's. I think it's bad news in that we would have liked to have achieved it, but I never thought it was a realistic goal because they still haven't gotten the fine-tuned parts of the of the policy. And an issue like this, the details are really very important. So you fully expect there will be prisoners in Guantanamo after the deadline? All I know is, frankly, what I briefed on, and, and apparently they're certainly not going to make that deadline, but we should continue to work towards the closure of Guantanamo Bay because of the image that it has in the world of brutality and uh, harms our image very badly. Okay, let's talk about Afghanistan. You heard Secretary Gates there. I mean, you've, been, you've said that uh, it puts American troops at risk to delay. Mm -hmm. uh, this decision, but you heard Secretary Gates. He says, number one, General McChrystal found the situation much worse than he anticipated, and the mm -hmm. election uh, was even more corrupt mm -hmm. than they anticipated, which is why it's responsible to have a review. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, the, um, I trust General McChrystal and General Petraeus and Admiral Mullen uh, and their military assessment. I understand the president has other factors that he has to take into consideration, but I would remind you that when we decided to do the surge in Iraq, the Maliki government was in worse shape than, uh, than the, the present government in, in Afghanistan. But there was more of a tradition the, of centralized was, control in Iraq. Uh, th but there was no control. The, the country was uh, in flames in sectarian violence. Uh, the Maliki government didn't have any authority outside the gates uh, of his residence. Uh, it was far, far worse. But then we implemented a strategy where we went in and provided an environment of security so that the political and economic process, two steps forward, one step back, uh, and, we, and we succeeded. And it's because we gave people an environment where they could start living some semblance of a normal daily lives. That's a counterinsurgency strategy. What the opponents are talking about is a counterterrorism strategy. You can't just sit off on the sidelines and kill people, as Secretary Gates said. You've got to have the intelligence, you've got to be there with the people, and you have to One make a, a real commitment. Our allies in the regions, while we're waiting, our friends in the region are getting very nervous, as well as our European allies. One of those opponents is the former commandant of the Marine Corps, Chuck mm -hmm. Rulak, who mm -hmm. wrote George Will just a few weeks ago, laying out mm -hmm. his uh, ideas, and he seemed to echo something that we hear that General Casey, General George Casey, mm -hmm. the chief of the staff of the Army, also talks about it, and that is there is simply too much stress on our forces now for a big surge. Listen to uh, Gen Commandant Krulak. Not only are our troops being run ragged, but equally important and totally off most people's radar screens, our equipment is being run ragged. At some point in time, the bill for that equipment will come due, and it will be a very large bill. It's a valid concern, isn't it? I think it's a very legitimate concern. Uh, the fact is recruiting and retention are at all-time highs. The fact is this has been an enormous strain on these men and women their families. Incredible strain. But nothing helps morale more than victory, and nothing hurts morale more than defeat. It took our military more than a decade to recover from the loss in Vietnam, and yet now that we've succeeded in Iraq, and we've got a long ways to go, then I am confident that our military will do what's necessary, and they'll do it because they know the mission that they're carrying out is one of vital importance to our national security. But it's going to take more than a decade to succeed, isn't it? I think you will see signs of success in a year to 18 months if we implement the strategy right away. And by the way, I sympathize with the president. The, the base of his party, the left base of his party, is opposed. Uh, this is 
uh, American people are weary of this conflict. And I, I, I do have sympathy for the president making this decision. It's the toughest decision a president has to make to send people into harm's way. But I'd remind you throughout history, whether it be Harry Truman or Franklin Delano Roosevelt or Abraham Lincoln, leaders have had to make tough to cho choices, and history has judged them very kindly. Have you spoken directly to the president about your concerns? Yesterday. And what did, what did you say to him? We had a good conversation, as we always do, and I pointed out what the point you made earlier, that in Iraq, the Maliki government was certainly failing, and this, this election in Afghanistan was corrupt. There is corruption from the cop, the cop on the beat to, to, the, to the president's brother, uh, uh, Karzai's brother, and that issue has to be addressed if we're going to succeed, but we're not going to have a chance to succeed if we withdraw. And by the way, we've really got the status quo, which Admiral Mullen and General McChrystal say is not succeeding, or we can implement this new strategy, which is really an old strategy called counterinsurgency, or we better get out. You and the a president. Half measure, a half measure does not do justice. And time is important because there's 68,000 Americans already there, and casualties will go up. Are you concerned that the president is going to choose a half measure, or do you see the possibility for a meeting of the minds between you and the president on this? Uh, I'm very hopeful that the president will make the right decision, which is to, to commit the necessary troops. And again, I, as much as I respect Secretary Gates, I'm not sure how you make a informed decision if you don't take into consideration the resources are necessary to exercise one of those options. And by the way, I think it's the worst, one of the many worst kept secrets in Washington. It's 30 to 40,000 troops. And, and he says that decision will come in a few weeks. So what's your betting on what the president's going to do? I, I can't bet, but I know what the president said during the campaign about the war in Afghanistan that we couldn't muddle through. <laughs> I know the president, uh, as sh short a time ago as Mark said, we could not allow the Taliban to achieve, ba uh, allow Al Qaeda back again in Afghanistan to uh, serve as a base for attacks on the United States and our allies. And uh, and by the way, the Taliban are not. Not, are not popular with the people of Afghanistan. They don't want to go back to that. So one final question. Does the president get sure. your argument? I think the president, as I said, I think he has a very difficult decision. The base of his party, Americans are weary. Understandably, they're weary. And it, it's a very difficult decision for him. But uh, I believe he'll make the right decision. Senator McCain, thanks very much for your time this morning. Thanks for having me on.